Bellator 106 just got over at a quarter to 1 a.m. Eastern, a quarter to midnight Central. Although with daylight savings time tomorrow, you're going to get an hour back. And you might need it because all three title fights tonight went the full five rounds. But let's break it down from the start to the finish. And I admit I didn't see these first two prelims, but I saw everything else. Josh Smith defeated Darren Smith. That was unanimous 29-28 across the board in a lightweight contest. Can't say anything about it because, as noted, I did not see this prelim, nor did I see the catchweight bout of Clever Luciano defeating Joe Camacho 30-27 across the board at 150 pounds. Then in a lightweight bout, Mike the Joker Guyman of UFC fame defeated Aaron Miller with a triangle choke at 420 of the second round. And I think... Uh, Miller was doing well in the fight until Guyman caught him. Both guys were uh, looking to prove something here, and Miller was on a three-fight win streak, but it didn't work out in his favor. Halsey wasted no time. Brandon Halsey, that is. He defeated Hector Ramirez at 52 seconds of the first round, just took him down and punched the crap out of him until the ref stopped the fight. And that was the most dominant performance of the entire night. There was one other first-round finish, but it wasn't nearly that devastating. Cristiano Souza defeated Alejandro Garcia with a rear naked choke pretty late in the third round, 306 in. Souza was the better guy here for the most part. He was given a tough test by Garcia at times, but you could see why the former contender on Bellator Fightmaster was considered a top prospect on that show. It didn't pan out there, but he was able to assert his dominance. You might have worried that he would gas out with his musculature, but no, it didn't happen. He uh, he maintained here and was able to get the win. Then on our main card for Spike TV, 25 minutes later, we had Mike Rickman knocking out, or TKO, I suppose technically, Acop Stepanian. Either way, Stepanian was done at 4.05 of the first round. It was, it was a very interesting sequence of events because Stepanian stunned Rickman with a shot, and Rickman just kind of looked at him and said, Okay, you hit me, I'll hit you harder. And blasted him and went for the double hammer fist on the ground. And Herb Dean stepped in and said, No, that's enough. Uh, it, was, it was a good fight. Joe Diesel Riggs was able to outlast and out-wrestle Mike Bronzulas for 30-27 across the board. Bronzulas really needed to keep it standing and try to exchange because he had nothing for takedown defense and... Riggs kept going for rear naked chokes and triangle chokes. And, well, people were complaining that he looked sloppy on Twitter. I know I saw that from Josh Gross of ESPN. Well, if he's sloppy, what does that say for Bronzulas then? Because Bronzulas couldn't do anything to stop the takedown. So, you can call it sloppy if you want, but Joe Riggs was still the crafty veteran here and dominated him. And now, the first of our three title fights of the evening. Daniel Strauss... Went the full length with Pat Curran and got a 49-45 and two 48-46s. And if you're wondering how that happened, Strauss got a deduction, or I should say, Curran got a deduction for an illegal knee to the grounded opponent. He didn't have his hand down, but he was in a grounded stance anyway. And Curran threw the knee and immediately knew it was wrong and was apologizing, but he still got the point deducted, so he lost that round 10-8. And then Strauss just kind of took over in the fourth and fifth round anyway, so it, it ended up being academic whether he lost that round by a big margin or not, because he lost the fight as a whole. Manuel Newton and Mola Wall had a fight that went to the decision 49-46 across the board, and the hardcore kid picked it up. Lal was trying and failing to get a lot of takedowns, Newton was throwing a lot of strikes, some hit, some didn't, but on the balance he landed more of them. And by the fourth round, Mo was looking like he was out of options, and Newton was able to just strike with him at will. It, it just, there were a couple of times Mo had him in danger, but in, in reality, Newton was actually the one that did more damage on the whole. Main event, lightweight rematch between Eddie Alvarez and Michael Chandler. This was super close, and both these guys had dominant rounds in the fight. I think the best round for Michael Chandler was the fourth. He got a takedown and beat Alvarez up for at least three straight minutes. Just pounded the crap out of him on the ground. 
And Alvarez had his best round in the fifth because he was uh, Chandler was going for finishes. You know, he he kept trying to find that rear naked choke and get a repeat of the first fight, but it was actually Alvarez going for the submissions in the fifth and doing the most damage striking. So it, at the end of that fifth round, depending on how you saw the first three, you knew that R four was Chandler, R five was Alvarez, and the rest was up in the air. So it turned out to be a split decision, 48-47 times two, for your new champion, Eddie Alvarez, gaining back his Bellator lightweight title. So that was three new titles in one night, because Curran lost to Strauss to crown a new featherweight champion, Emmanuel Newton beat King Mo to crown an interim light heavyweight champion, which means Newton has to face Attila Vey again now, and Eddie Alvarez defeated Chandler to give him his first loss and gain back the title. That's Bellator 106. I'm Stevie J.